Welcome to the Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching YouTube channel. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, my name is Dr. Frank. I'm the founder of Addiction Mindset, where we help people quit nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content. In today's video, I want to cover eight warning signs of potentially something that I'm going to refer to as weed-induced or cannabis-induced psychosis. Now, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with my story, I was addicted to nicotine, energy drinks, and THC products, and there was a period throughout my addiction where I personally experienced psychosis, and today I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, first and foremost, we just really quickly want to say what psychosis is. This is an impaired reality. So this is where your version of reality becomes impaired or distorted. Now, why do people get psychosis? It can be related to a mental illness like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or any other number of things, Parkinson's disease, any number of things. But in the case of drug-induced psychosis, what we're talking about usually on a really generic level is is the production of too much dopamine. And I think this is especially important in the topics that I cover because if we look at nicotine, THC, energy drinks, and adult media content, all of those things release a lot of dopamine. They flood our brains with dopamine, especially when they're used all day long, like I was doing, in conjunction with one and other, okay? And I think right now is a really important time to talk about this because we're just coming out of COVID, but there's still a lot of COVID stuff going on. And I'll tell you guys, we had most people calling our offices saying, hey, I never had this problem before with weed. I never felt like I was having psychosis until COVID hit because I was smoking more. I was under a lot more stress. I was under a lot more anxiety. And that's a point that I'm trying to make about psychosis. Your stress levels, the environment that you're in, all of these things can play a factor. So please keep that in mind, especially if you've been smoking weed for a long time like I was, and you're thinking, oh, there's no possible way weed could be causing this. All right, without further ado, let's talk about the warning signs and the symptoms. So symptom number one would be distorted sleep. Either you're sleeping way too much or you're not sleeping at all. For me personally, it was a combination of these two things. And the sad part was I just kept smoking more and more weed because I thought weed was the solution to my sleep problems. So here I was trying to smoke more and more, trying to fall asleep, but I'd be up all night long. And then during the day, I would just take like four, five, six hour naps, or at least I'd try my best to. And my sleep schedule was just destroyed. And this is potentially the first symptom or signal of psychosis. I wrote these down, guys, so I don't lose track. Symptom number two, a lack of self-care. So this is where, and self-care could refer to a few different things. Maybe you're not brushing your teeth anymore. Maybe you're not showering anymore. But maybe self-care comes in the form for it was like me. Maybe your car is just a complete mess. Maybe your room is just a complete mess. And guys, don't get me wrong. Like I still have a messy car. I still have a messy room. Look at my office. I'm not a super organized person. Never was, never will be. I've been that way since grade school. But I'm talking about things are exceptionally getting messier and messier, more and more out of control. Basic hygiene is starting to slip. This is a sign or signal that you might be slipping into psychosis. Thing number three, paranoia or delusions. Now, in this case, I can't say I necessarily had paranoia. To an extent, I did. I did realize when I was trying to talk to people, I'm a very social person. I was getting tons of anxiety and I was I was getting somewhat paranoid in social situations. And I was starting to think like, oh my God, everyone knows what I did last night. Like everyone knows that I spent my evening smoking weed, ripping nicotine, chewing tobacco, and then falling asleep to adult media content. Like I just, now everyone knows because I got a YouTube channel about it. But I, I constantly, this was on my mind and it was really, really bothersome. Like it made me extremely kind of paranoid when I was interacting with people. Delusions, I can't really say I had any delusions. This is holding a belief 
that is clearly false. The closest thing I had was delusions of grandeur, or like being grand. I was obsessed with watching Narcos when I was smoking weed a lot. And I had this true thought that I was like the Pablo Escobar of business. Like I thought, Frank, you are going to dominate in business. You are just going to, you are just going to dominate and create this conglomerate and this network. And this was within my personal business. I businesses. I felt this way. Pablo Escobar guys, minus all the terrorism, murdering, killing, all the horrible, horrific things he did. Um, you know, I really thought I was going to, I like, that was my thought process. And look, I'm still, I still think that way. I still want to dominate on YouTube when it comes to addiction recovery. I still want to dominate within my practices that I have, but it's just a little different. So that's the closest I could say I was to a delusion. Um, okay. Thing number four that you might be going into psychosis. This one's scary. Hallucinations. These can be hallucinations of smell. This can have to do with touch or tactile sensation. This can also have to do with voices or visual changes. Okay. So hearing things, visual changes, seeing things. And guys, this is hearing things that aren't there. So like you hear your mom talking to you, but she's really not. You smell something, but there's there's nothing to account for that scent. You feel a touch or a sensation along your body, but there's no one touching you. There's not a breeze. There's nothing creating that. Personally, the biggest issue that I had with this was the visual changes. Um, my vision was actually getting very distorted People's faces started to look blurry, words on paper I couldn't make out. And my sister is actually an optician, and I went to her doctor's practice, and I actually was getting assessed for visual changes. If you guys actually go back and watch some of my first videos, I had glasses because that's what people thought it was. Um, and I, I had like the most minor Vis like deficit on vision in my eyes, and they really couldn't explain what was going on. Looking back now, obviously, I withheld all this information from every doctor I saw, like everyone does. It's obvious that I was having visual changes and perception changes due to, I think, something related to psychosis. And guys, remember, I was smoking dry herb. I was using black market cartridges, medical grade cartridges. I was really messing around with some high potency THC. I was at a particularly stressful time during my life. I was pounding the energy drinks. And guys, I, I want to say this really quick. Energy drinks alone have studies tying them to psychosis. And I think a lot of that has to do with that dopamine release that we talked about. Porn alone has been linked to psychosis. Social media alone induced psychosis. COVID-19 alone induced psychosis. Imagine if you're combining all this stuff, right? Okay. Symptom number five would be mania or manic behavior. I can say I was definitely manic by the time I quit smoking THC, by the time I quit using weed, as I was going through the withdrawal process. Like I would just run so high. And I can relate to this. I Here I was in my grand thinking, like I'm going to accomplish 80 million things, burning rubber at 1,000 miles per hour in my head, running in a circle, and not accomplishing anything, not actually getting anything done or actually seeing anything through. This could be a symptom of psychosis. This could be a symptom of manic behavior. Symptom number six, six people asking you if you're okay. And, you know, guys, for me, this was predominantly my family, my mother, God bless her. This was predominantly her. Hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? Something doesn't seem right with you. Do you need help with something? Uh, is Are things going okay? And, you know, the worst part, guys, was I was suffering from addiction. So nothing made me more upset than when people would ask me this question. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, I actually think People asking me this question sometimes kind of triggered me to go deeper and deeper into that addiction, into that substance use. Um, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, people asking me if I was okay really triggered me. I don't know what a better approach could have been, though. Like, I don't know. But my point is, are other people noticing a change in your behavior, a change in your appearance? This might be a symptom of psychosis, guys. Um, okay. 
Symptom number seven, what did I write here? Oh, removing yourself from activities or removing yourself from people that you enjoy being around. Is, is this happening? Are you finding yourself becoming more and more isolated? Uh, COVID-19 did this to a lot of people, which is why they talk about psychosis induced by COVID-19 alone. Now imagine if someone's drinking more alcohol, smoking more weed, and is now in isolation from COVID-19. We have a serious risk for this person potentially winding up dealing with psychosis. Symptom number eight, finally, are you falling behind on keeping up with life? Are you missing appointments? Are you not paying bills? Are you finding it harder and harder to respond to a text or to open up that email or to open up that piece of mail? Guys, this might be a symptom of psychosis, and I 100% experience this. Heck, I'm still unlearning some of these behaviors. Now, I do want to say, especially for symptom number eight, a lot of these things also overlap basic symptoms of addiction. So I don't want you guys to freak out who are watching this video and think, oh my God, I have psychosis, because that might not be the case, right? Isolation can be a symptom of addiction, um, right? Decreased self-care can be a symptom of addiction. Disturbed sleep is a very common symptom of addiction, especially when we're talking about nicotine and THC or cannabis addiction. So I, I want you guys to, to not freak out, those of you who are watching this. Now, if you want to talk about this more, we do have access to our group coaching classes, guys. You can find the links in the top pinned comment below. You can work with our offices one-on-one. -on -one. We do have professionally trained psychologists on our team for this. I'm happy to talk to you about it, my experience, what I did to get better. I'll make more videos on that, but check out the video description for more information. Check out the comments, the top pin comment for more information. And I hope this helps you guys. I hope it kind of makes you realize like, hey, maybe I am at risk and, and maybe it's not necessarily all due to weed, but maybe these changing life circumstances have added to that and it's something you got to be careful with. And it does get better, guys. Obviously, I'm doing much better now than I was. I never could have even had the coherence to make a video like this a few years back. So have a good one.